Okay, so in this section, section 8.6, we're going to look at confidence intervals and hypothesis testing. So that's great news because we already know how to do both of those. So we're not actually going to have to learn any new material in this section. We're just simply going to be doing both of those within each problem, and then we're going to compare the results with each other. So what is the relationship between confidence intervals and hypothesis testing? Well, there's two things you need to know. So the first is that when the null hypothesis is rejected, then the confidence interval computed using the same level of significance will not contain the hypothesized mean. So if we reject the null hypothesis, then that value should not show up between um, that confidence interval or in that confidence interval. Okay, and then vice versa. So when the null hypothesis is not rejected, then the corresponding confidence interval will contain the hypothesized mean. So that's basically the only kind of new things that you need to know for this section. So let's do a couple examples. So example five says that sugar is packed in five pound bags. An inspector suspects the bags may not contain five pounds. A random sample of 50 bags produces a mean of 4.6 pounds and a standard deviation of 0.7 pounds. Is there enough evidence to conclude that the bags do not contain 5 pounds with alpha being 0.05? And then after we do that, we will also find the 95% confidence interval of the true mean. And as always, we assume the variable is normally distributed. Okay, so let's do the hypothesis test first. So we'll start with step one, so our null hypothesis. So this question is talking about the mean of something, so we're going to use mu as our symbol. And then, let's see, they suspect the bag may not contain five pounds, so we'll put mu equals five for the null. And then we'll put the claim in the alternative, so we'll say that mu does not equal five, and we'll label that as the claim. So because it just says, you know, they think that it may not contain five pounds, it doesn't give a direction as far as like more than or less than, then we'll just use that not equal to sign. Okay, step two. Now, now we have to figure out which test to use basically. So since we're talking about means or averages, that means we either want to use a Z test or a T test. So it all comes down to whether or not we have the population standard deviation. So if you read the question, it does tell us the standard deviation, but it's not of the population. That's for that sample there. So they did not tell us what the population standard deviation is. So since that's unknown, that means we're going to use a t-test. Now the question doesn't state what method to use as far as the t-test. Um, oh, and actually we only learned one for the t-test. So let's definitely use the p-value method. So you'll just go to t-test in your calculator, and then we'll type everything in. So mu naught is equal to 5. Your sample mean, x bar, is 4.6. The sample standard deviation is 0.7. n is going to be 50. And then make sure you select not equal to mu naught. OK, and then for your p-value, Let's see, if we were in a normal class right now, I would normally ask you guys, okay, did anyone get 1.876? And there's always several students who nod their, hair yet, nod their head yes, and I can tell that they're happy that they got the right answer. But does that answer even make sense? So remember, p-values are probabilities. So can we have a probability of 1.876? No, probability has to be a value between 0 and 1. So if you actually did this problem along with me, you know, take another look at your calculator, you'll see that after the 1.876, near the end of your screen, there's an E negative four. Okay, so we haven't seen that in a while. So remember, that means that you have to move your decimal place four spots to the left. Okay, your calculator will not do that for you. So you just jot the number down, move your decimal place back four spots, and then we'll go ahead and round that value off to four decimal places for our p-value. So our p-value is actually 0 0.0002. Okay, so then once we have our p-value, we're gonna compare that with alpha. So 
So 0 0.0002 is really small, so it's definitely less than or equal to 0 0.05. And when P is less than or equal to alpha, that means that we should reject the null hypothesis. And then our conclusion statement for step four, since we rejected the null and the claim is in the alternative, that means that there is enough evidence to support the claim. All right, so that was our hypothesis test. Now we also wanna go ahead and do or find a 95% confidence interval of the true mean. Okay, so we already kind of talked about why we're using a t-test. Well, all of those same reasons are why we're gonna use t-interval. So that was back in chapter seven. So t-interval, so you'll go to t-interval in your calculator, put all that same information in. Um, it'll ask you for your confidence level, it's 0.95. And then you should get, for your confidence interval, 4.4011, so we think mu is between that number and 4.7989. Okay, now the whole point of doing both of these in one problem, um, when you're on Connect Math and on the test, the question is gonna ask you, do the results agree? And you're gonna have to explain your answer. So let's kind of think about this. So what you want to do is look back at your hypothesis test and go to step three and see what you decided. So we decided to reject the null hypothesis. So what did the null say? Well, the null said that mu equals five. So since we're rejecting that, then in plain English, we're basically saying that we don't think mu is equal to five. So that means if we don't think mu is equal to five, then it should not be showing up in our confidence interval, right? Your confidence interval is the values that you think mu could be. So we don't think that mu is five, and then we look at our confidence interval, and sure enough, five does not fall between those two values. So that's a good thing. That means that our results do agree and you can just give like a simple answer as far as why, just make sure that it makes sense. Um, but we could say, yes, they agree since the confidence interval does not contain mu equals five. Okay, so that's really the whole idea here. So let's just do one more example. So according to public, a public service website, 69.4% of white collar criminals get prison time. A randomly selected sample of 165 white collar criminals revealed that 120 of them were serving or had served prison time. Alpha's 0.05 tests the conjecture that the proportion of white collar criminals serving prison time differs from 69.4% in two different ways. Okay, so if your question asks you to test something in two different ways, it's basically saying do a hypothesis test, find a confidence interval, and then compare the results. So let's do the hypothesis test first. Okay, so this question is talking about proportions. So for our null hypothesis, um, we'll use P, and then let's see, we're seeing if Test the conjecture that the proportion serving prison time differs from 69.4%. Okay, so I'm gonna use equals for my null, so I'll say that P equals 0.694. Remember, you do have to turn percents into decimals. Okay, and that's not the claim, so we're testing whether or not it differs from 69.4. So for the alternative hypothesis, we'll say that P does not equal 0.694, and we'll label that one as the claim. Okay, so we're talking about proportions, so that means that we should, um, well, for proportions, we did learn both the traditional method and the p-value method. If the question does not specify, then obviously it's your choice what you wanna do, so p-value one is a little bit quicker, so let's do the p-value method here. So for that, you're gonna go to one prop z test in your calculator, and we'll fill in all the information. So p naught is the 0.694, X is the number of people who have that characteristic, so 120 were serving or had served prison time. Total number in your sample is 165. Make sure you select not equal to P naught. 
and then when you calculate your p-value, you should get 0.3537. And then once we have that, for step three, we're just gonna compare that with our level of significance. So since 0.3575, no, 0.3537 is greater than 0 0.05, that means that we do not reject the null hypothesis. And then for step four, for our, our conclusion statement, um, since we didn't reject the null, um, that means that there's not enough evidence to support the claim since the claim was in the alternative. Okay, so that's our hypothesis test. So let's do our confidence interval. So think back to where you go in your calculator for confidence interval for proportions. So it's really similar to a one prop Z test. It's one prop Z int. So one proportion Z interval. So you'll go there. And then you'll type a few things in that it asks for. Now, one thing that it's gonna ask for is your confidence level. And if you read this question, you'll notice that it did not tell us specifically what the confidence level is. And that's because it honestly doesn't have to. So we're always finding the corresponding confidence level that goes with the hypothesis test. And for the hypothesis test, we're told what alpha is. And if we know what alpha is, then we definitely can figure out what the confidence level is. So if you remember, the relationship between the two is that your confidence level is equal to one minus alpha. So if alpha is 0 0.05, then you know automatically that your confidence level is 0.95. And I would honestly say that little concept right there is probably the most missed concept on the test, a lot of students will get this entire question wrong because they just can't figure out what the confidence level is. So just remember, if it doesn't tell you, that's because it gave you alpha and all you have to do is one minus alpha to get the confidence level. Okay, so you'll put that into your calculator and then for your confidence interval, you'll get that the true proportion is between 0.6593 and 0.7952. Okay, so same thing as the last problem. Let's kind of look at our results and see if they agree. Okay, so look back at your hypothesis test, go to step three and see what we decided. So we decided to not reject the null. Okay, and the null said that the proportion equals 0.694. So we're not rejecting that, which in plain English means that, yeah, we do think the true proportion is 0.694. So that means as far as your confidence interval, that that value should show up between those two numbers. So if we think that 0.694 could be the um, proportion, then it should definitely be in our confidence interval. So does it fall between those two? Yes, it definitely does. So our answer is yes, they agree. And we can explain why by saying that 0.694 is contained in the confidence interval.